Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer, but I hope you're in the mood to paint today because I'm in the mood to paint. I'm going to be showing you at home how you can create for yourself in Yes For Real this gorgeous picture of a very good boy holding a autumn leaf for somebody that he loves. Oh my goodness, it did the chat, the live thing. So we're live today. If you have a question, be sure to put it all in caps. We won't think that you're yelling. Um, I was just trying to get the chat back so I could hi say hi to Shirley and Phyllis and Charlotte and April and Pam. So I'm like all over it, saying hi to everybody, being ready to do this. Now we're gonna deep dive today, which I really like. And Whenever I do a deep dive, um, sometimes because my channel is known for helping beginners, uh, that is weirdly confusing to help me do this is my husband, John, who's been so <laughs> quietly waiting for an introduction. No. Oh, no, Hi, okay. that's John. He Hi. points the cameras at all the things that I'm talking about demoing and teaching. But today is going to be a deeper dive into technique. Now, it's still for beginners, and the reason why is this. I'm not just doing a demo. I am talking about every color mix, every tool, every brush stroke, every step in detail. So it's still for beginners, but in these classes, they will run a little longer. So you might find yourself getting more fatigued if you're really new to painting. And I might be using some more colors or tools than I would on say a one hoot. So this is a three hoot, not a one hoot, but I still think it's worth staying in for if you really, really, really want to know how to paint fur, how to make adjustments on photographs. Oh, hey, Heather, thank you so much. Like one of the big adjustments we're going to make is we're going to pull the nose a little more into focus. Then our reference photo, we're still going to play with our out of focus bokeh perspective back here, but I do want to bring the nose a little more into clarity. So we're going to do a focus you wouldn't get with a camera, but you can get when you're an artist are and that'll you, be super fun. Hmm? Are you for real? I'm for real, John. Now I'm on an 11 by 14 surface today. I don't expect you to draw to do this. The traceable is free to download on my website. On the 11 by 14, sometimes I find I like to enlarge the traceable and then just free sketch in the little bits that are sort of off the paper because I don't really would need all of it. Um, and you may find that works for you too. Some people use a tiling service like Rasturbator where it tiles them and then you just line it up. So there's a lot of ways to do that from your at home printer. I'm working on an 11 by 14 surface today. I get asked this a lot lately. Do you need to gesso the surface? Not today, not for this technique. Canvases like this come out of the package gessoed. You don't really need to re gesso them unless you hate factory gesso, which sometimes is really good gesso. It's a weird deal. I'm actually putting out dioxazine purple today, quinacridone magenta. I've got some cad yellow ochre. I have gloss glazing liquid today. That's going to help me with my blending and glazing and slowing down in my. What is. Oh, I think it's the, yeah. That, isn't it the test they do? I think. There's a, there's a, we have a, a tornado siren thingy in where we live. I'm just instantly thinking of the kids. No, Live shows. Fine. But so. Sometimes <laughs> means you get a tornado siren. We moved to a place in Michigan that has tornado sirens. And I think they test them. I hope this is a test I, I of our local it's siren because system. Because it's a one o'clock. It's, it's on the hour. So it's very likely this is a test. SME615 says, does it matter what colors you use in that you will get slightly different results for mine if you use different reds or different yellows? There is a video I did called The Eight Colors You Need, <laughs> and it actually explains to you why that's true. Wow, this is just, hi, I'm live during hopefully not a tornado siren. I'm going to go, go over all the colors. I'm going to go over the colors again. Docs, purple, okay, quinacridone, magenta. It's Yellow ochre, gloss glazing liquid, ultramarine blue, Mars black, burnt sienna, cad red, cad yellow, titanium white. And I want you guys to start thinking about zinc white. All of these ghostly effects that we're going to be getting in and these more oil effects is going to be combinations of zinc white and glazing Ooh. liquids and the way that we play with white. So it's just something to have on your radar. I'll demo it a little bit today. But I want you to be thinking about it to understand yep. for more oil effects, you're going to need zinc white and some blending tools to get those more diffused effects. Yeah, All I, right. I think that was the test. It was test. I, I want to say, I'm going to even go look at it. I'm going to sketch in. Let's put up a step in. I'm going to sketch in him in paint a little bit just so I know. Oh, that's is. not right. We're not on step 18. Look at me go. Step one would be oh, good. Gonna, you give me a second. I'll get you a step one. 
But you, we can all just pretend that was step one. Can we? I don't know that we can. I'm gonna no. I have to do select. I'm gonna None, brushes do. anyways. I'm gonna use this uh, number six CP around. I'm gonna get another package of these. All, all right. right. Give you a step one, and then I'm gonna get the uh, picture back. Now, if you have the traceable, you'll want to transfer it onto your surface by now. Especially on the eyes, try to keep those in line. Right, you want to just make sure your eyes are lined up correctly on the head. We're going to do a deep dive eye class today and a deep dive fur class today. So if you've been struggling with fur, especially black fur, this was a good class to show up on. Because this is a traditional black fur. It doesn't have like a big undertone to it. We're going to be just using technique and value to create it. I am lightly sketching things in with paint so that as I'm painting, I don't lose my lines. I, you know, I just want to keep these a little bit. Second Tuesday. And I'm using burnt sienna. So second Tuesday. So it's the second Tuesday of the month at one o'clock. My guess is that that is a significant time. I haven't looked up to see if the tests are there, but I seem to remember hmm. last month having that same concern around this time. Should we do so, this last one too? I, I think so. Right, I'm going to just do this here. All right, now I'm going to do light sketching down here because a lot of this is blended away, right? It's going to be in a very diffused bokeh, so his body is going to be out of focus, right? And the ground is going to be out of focus. And we're going to also go over in detail, how do we get those techniques, right? So not just fur today, not just the best eye and nose class you've had in a while, but we're also going to be working on how we get a diffused out of focus effect in the background. So. These are more challenging things to do as an acrylic painter. Acrylic paint dries so quickly that sometimes getting a good blend is really just not our favorite experience. I'm going to do the little ear fluffies so I know where they are, but I know I'm going to be painting back into those. And I will go ahead and lightly sketch out my leaf. This is just a light sketch of paint. I'm just saying I'm not doing a particularly heavy application of the paint. It's just a light sketch of paint. Just so I can keep track of where objects are as I'm painting backgrounds and diffusing things. Having an idea where I'm going to be covering something with a major object prevents me from doing the best painting of my life under this leaf. Because that's what would happen. That's what Murphy's Law in the art studio says is the best painting of your life will be under the subject matter that is the central focus of your painting. <laughs> Just saying, I've been here an artist for a minute. I've dealt with Murphy once or twice. If you're not familiar with Murphy's Law, I grew up in a household where Murphy's Law was law. And in it, basically, the rule was that if anything could go wrong, it did go wrong. Yeah. So you can tell that my dad, uh, he was a pragmatist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we go. Look at that right there. So we want those sketched in as good as we can. I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer. And that's just because I don't want to smear paint. Yeah, just make sure you, if you're going to do that little sketch in, just give it a little dry. It won't take very much. You just want to make sure that you're not dragging any paint as you go along. And it's so nice to catch everybody here on our show. Uh, it's a nice day to be live. Um, we've got sirens calling it out, telling us that today is the day to paint, which is a good day for you to join us and paint. So don't be afraid. Pick up the paint brush and put it in the paint and then put it on the surface and then make paintings. That's all, I mean, that's all there is to it. Once you have accomplished those steps, you are then a painter. Everything else is, gets just easier. All right. Let's just be chilling. To the next step. To the next step, to the next step. All right, I'm gonna use an oval mop. And in this particular case, I've got a three quarter inch oval mop. You could use a one inch or half inch. I just want a synthetic. Now I want you to notice something about this. The filaments on this brush, the Princeton Select oval mop, are a kind of rust brown to a dark tip. The other two mops in this line are goat hair and hair hair which you'll notice when you get them wet. I had my nose in a brush at the retreat. I was like, 
trying to smell if it was hair or not because the because the person who bought it was struggling to get the effect. The effect is harder to get on a natural hair brush. You want the synthetic. I'm going to start this out by taking a little bit of my the oxazine purple and my burnt sienna together. I might even get a little of my gloss glazing liquid in there. I want to create a very dark background to work up from. Now you'll notice that I will kind of feather here. That's because a lot of this is going to be out of focus and then I'll have the leaf and other things being hyper focused. That's going to give us a depth of field. I'm going to just, again, this first layer, I just want this dark, dark. I love using purple on an autumn uh, color scape because it makes a great shadow color. And it also leaves me the black for my puppy. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that goes in to where the ear is going to be. That way I've got fluffies that I can layer because, again, we're going to want to out of focus this. So I don't want to lose everything completely, but I do want All right, let's just continue this over the whole background, this field of color. Feathering it in. Notice that I'm feathering it in. Feathering it in means this, this little edge here is tapered and has little individual little hairs or feathers that come in. That's a nice way to keep an object and blend a background. Got a little more brown on that, but I don't mind. What I really just want is the surface covered. How's everybody doing? Give you anxiety Good. to paint that background purple? I, I have, hope I, not. I'm, I have to say that I am slightly distracted. Mm -hmm. My friend Andrew texted me. He just woke up. He's on the East Coast. Oh, East why Coast. is Andrew on the East Coast doing something amazing in art, I assume? Living there, I think. <laughs> Or on the west coast, sorry. Oh, I was like, coast. We're on the east. We're on. He's on the other coast, the other side of. The he's on the west coast. West coast. You know, I, I was always a west coast person, so <laughs> it's real weird for me to think that there are people on the other coast, and the other coast isn't the east coast. You would think it would be the opposite, because I grew up in San Diego, so you would probably think I think of myself as a West Coast pr person, but actually, a lot of times when I have something YouTube to do, I'll pick the East Coast. I, you know, I didn't, I never understood how much of an East Coast person I am until I got here. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, my people, is. you are all here and friendly, and you have... Funky yards. You mean you Midwest. Know. I think you mean Midwest. I don't know. Because don't there's, know. There, you know, Donna and Jules. Like, you know, there's just a whole bunch of people who are like definitely. Lovely here? Yeah. No, I, just, I have to agree. So it's a weird purple background and your dog should look, you know, a little bit like the background's crowding in and grabbing him. Yeah. A little alarming at this stage, right? Is it best to skip to another painting if you messed up on one painting? So is it best to do that? Asked Lindsay Michelle. And my answer is going to be this and then I will dry. And John can talk about it further. So if you're trying to learn a new technique and you're struggling, completion is always your friend. Because it is through completion that you stretch your creative abilities and get that extra reach. But if you're getting so frustrated that it's stopping you from painting, well, now you've undermined your number one tool in your painting arsenal, getting better painting, which is painting. So as artists, we always have to balance that. Yes, sometimes we're going to be uncomfortable in a painting and we should finish those, especially for trying for technique or we're not getting something. It's a great place to work it out. You've already like let go worrying about the result if you're like the painting doesn't work. But if you are... Um, like not painting anything else because of it then yeah you definitely want to paint something else yeah so as cinnamon was saying in uh 
taking on new projects. It doesn't really matter whether you're taking on painting or anything new. Um, I have learned, has been my experience, uh, that even when I was bad at something, uh, go completing it was of great value to me. Um, and, and I didn't learn this value until much later in life. But I'll give you an example, like when I did my first pottery, um, it was horrible. And it was wonkety, and I'm sure everyone's had this kind of experience with like the first time they tried pottery because it's hard. And but you had to make your first pot at some point, and it came out all wonkety. And now, um, now that I can look back at time and I can say that first pot I made is very valuable because it's that wonkiness and all my choices that I made and the failures that I made, I value it. So I put it on my desk, even though I can make something way better than that. That very first pot I made had a lot of value for me. So it's completion was important. Yeah, completion can be important, but not giving up also. So it's yeah. always about balancing that. I'm going to make a little orange. I'm taking my cad red and my cad yellow, and I'm still on my three-quarter inch angle. And I'll come over even into my purple. And I'm going to make little soft marks. I may need glazing medium right over the purple. They're going to be just little loose marks. Sometimes I might put a little more purple on it. You can see that blends it out. And notice that these are then not in focus, are they? I'm going to do a little more red in it. I can. It goes a little more rust brown. But I can also be a little more purple here. This is going to be a good chance for you to practice those skills that you really, really need. I'm going to take a little bit of red over to my purple. Make sure I've got that kind of happening here a little darker. See how it's a little darker? Now I'm going to rinse out and I'm going to grab a little bit of my brown and my blue, my ultramarine blue, and I'm going to get some white. I'm going to come here and I'm going to already start to diffuse between the dog and the background. Coming here, I'm using my white. I've got a little glazing medium on here. Rinse out. And blend out. Maybe a little more in the burnt sienna. Now I'll grab a little more blue. Glazy medium if I need it. I'm going to make sure that I kind of bring a little bit of that diffused white out this way. See how it's diffused? Not in focus. So some of that is the brush, and some of that is the technique, and some of that is working these things wet into wet, but we don't want it to be in focus. I'm going to rinse out. And then a blend edge. Here, see how I'm blending edge? I'm going to come right back in. A little more red, a little more dark purple. Hmm. Now, if you get a, a little more yellow into it, is there is there an if you don't have a mop brush, what else could you use? I I'm gonna say for certain techniques, you've got to get a soft brush. Oh right, yeah. That's I true. I I some 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 techniques are like tool it doesn't have driven. to be this mop brush but if you're trying to do soft out of focus techniques you can come in with like a hog brush like this and you will get you know soft you can get soft techniques here too get similar but 
it, it is a little different. It'll have a little more kind of scratchiness to it, right? It'll have a little more brush stroke in it, but it's just about finding these these moments and balancing that out. I'm not trying to make you buy a brush. Yes, it's true. I have this brush on my website, but this brush does exist in art stores like so everywhere. I'll comment on this because I see a lot of questions and I see cinnamon teach a lot and I don't paint myself. So it has bring been some dark purple around here. It has been my observation that you can change just about anything cinnamon recommends, but you will get a different result. So and sometimes even doing exactly what I'm doing is hard to get the good result too. Like yeah. that's the, that's the thing to understand is sometimes there's there's the technique and there's the brush, but then there's also I'm adding a little more red into it to kind of bring this into more fall colors. As you can That's see. not a bad thing though. You, you can you can get a, a similar look with a with a slightly different brush, but it'll be a little scratchier. That's not to say it will be bad, but it won't have the same characteristics of brush that this one does, which is a very soft blend. Right, and when I'm trying to make acrylic look like oils, that can be very important. Trying to make sure that I get a little bit of the red up there, and I might grab a little brown and bring some brown through. You can also get some yellow ochre and a little white involved. Yeah, so absolutely know that you can change to different brushes or different colors. I'm just taking little tiny soft strokes and then I'm feathering them out. But it will change what happens. That's so, all it is. Yeah. I can tell you how these techniques are achieved. I don't want you to have to run out and buy a thing generally, but sometimes you do need certain types of brushes. You need stiff brushes for heavy body techniques. You need soft blending brushes. You can do diffusions. Like there are lots and lots and lots of reasons that you might need no, it, that, a brush. Yeah. Going to bring this here and I'm going to come in and kind of start the diffusion of this and it's going to be in a gray so i took a little bit of my mars black and my ultramarine blue and that made a little blue gray and i'm going to come here and blend out some of this into what will be and i can come in with this with a little black all right i'm gonna I'm going to do a plug for us. If you guys are thinking about getting more art supplies, you don't have to. We appreciate when you support supporting our store because that's how we are also supporting ourselves. And rinse out. And it helps keep these videos free that we produce. And we love doing it. And thank you guys. So just consider that. When I'm you're grabbing a little bit of my white and brown and glazing medium just to make sure that I've got a nice diffusion here. I definitely, definitely want to make sure that some of my painting is out of focus. I can tell you that I'm not, I'm not focused. What'd you miss? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> don't come here. So yeah, I always want to be able to, I wish I could tell you guys every time, yeah, you don't need a brush or you don't need a thing, but you do need a couple soft ovals. Like, Everybody wants to get those oil techniques and I got to tell you, I get some not fun complaints when people don't feel like they get them, but unfortunately that does mean investing in certain tools. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, what happened? Sometimes you need different tools. Sometimes you do. All right. That was just a little too much pigment. And not enough blending medium, but look, I can come, if I need to come here, I can come back in with my yellow and no, no. So I definitely want that feeling of diffusion, diffusion, diffusion. That's almost even sometimes too, too hard of a thing. So I'm going to wipe my brush out and get it kind of damp. And I'm just going to keep working that until I get it. Soft edge, not in focus. So this is a big lesson for, again, bokeh. 
you've been struggling to get areas of your painting out of focus and if you are uh, struggling with getting eyes noses or fur great painting I'm going to come here with a little more red yellow and diffuse that too where I can and come back and put a little see I'm just putting a little purple back in so it's just working that through. Sorry if I interrupted, babe. Uh, did you interrupt me? I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about. Then probably oh, I didn't. Focus. You were talking about focus. It does go well. I'm back into my yellow-orange. And you can see that this gives me an incredible range of fall colors that you didn't realize probably that you were going to get from this range. Put in some more rust, the orange. Just go more into the red when I want that. And you can see that that is diffused. That is diffused, my friends. Maybe a little more burnt sienna here. I may add some more glazy medium so that when I come back to blend, I have a little time to get that blend in. That does definitely help me. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna and cad red here. I'll just go a lot more cad yellow. But then I have sort of an out of focus uh, back of the dog, don't I? And an out of focus tail. And again, this brush does help me not keep too many hard edges. That is a problem when I have too many hard edges. The edges. Yeah, because that will pull my eye. Just want to make sure that I can. A very soft blended little tail going off the canvas. I've got it more in a gray. But that's gonna I can come in easily and bring it to the black and the gray sometimes gives me diffusion whereas a black edge can hold so much weight that it won't necessarily diffuse as much as I would like. See there, we have a nice diffused background in. Gotta do a thing with my phone. Y'all need to excuse me for a second. Sure. I did that thing where I locked it the wrong oh. direction. <laughs> I was wondering what you were looking at over there. And I'm like, you know, I got to stop reading sideways. All right. So we're doing really good here. You guys are going to come away. People are going to be like, how did you get these effects in your acrylics? And you're going to be like, oh, because I got the right tools. It, it does it take a little bit of time. Sure. But that's okay. You don't mind. I'm going to take a little bit of my red and yellow again. And I will be using a lot of these. Just so you guys know, a lot of these. Now I'll come into the leaf because the leaf is going to be sharp and crisp and not blended. I can use this soft little purple to get a little shadow going in there. Have you guys, do you guys like this leaf technique? I have to say I like the technique. I think it's pretty neat. I'm just making sure my little edges so if I were to frame I would have good results. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that time to 
make sure my framing is good. I really, really like how these colors create the ultimate fall floor. Oh, yeah. I can see. It really does. I love how, how just gentle it is. And the other thing that is important to know is sometimes certain kinds of paint won't do techniques like craft paint does not do every technique well. Mm. Uh, it's too thin uh, in color often and in viscosity to do dry brushing easily like any of you who work in craft paint can attest that you probably work a little bit extra hard. I'm adding a little white to here to get to a uh, uh, dry brush effect. Maybe you'll notice that you're working harder than people around you. I'm grabbing a little yellow ochre. I'm coming and grabbing white and a little yellow ochre. Oh, Karen, thank you. Thank you. Amy over is my favorite so that somebody teacher says you don't need to get every single color as I am trying to organize all the things by color. Mm -hmm. No, like you don't need every single convenience color. Every color on the paint rack is probably not needed. But needing a thing and wanting a thing, those are not the same thing. <laughs> Sometimes I just want a color. A bunch of the quinacridones. I have a bunch of the quinacridones just because I like quinacridone colors so much. Ozo colors so much. So you'll have colors that maybe you have a bunch more than you need. I'm going to come up here and get a little more of my brown. And go into my orange. But see how that is now a diffused background. I'm going to come here and maybe just make sure that that's a little diffused too. I'm going to go ahead and wipe out the brush. So a lot of times I'm, I'm wiping all the moisture out of the brush. There we go. But that creates a little bit of a diffusion. Making sure everything is covered. I think we can call that a step. Let's dry everything that and call it a like step, a, yeah, guys. Good, good place to do that. Ah, so, yeah. Thank you, guys. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank, just reading up on there in the chat. That's really funny. Yeah, I have, I have lots of projects out there ready to get started. It's uh, Winter, I have found, is a good time to go through because you're kind of indoors anyway. And just you can get some back to some of the projecting things that you were doing. But, uh, yeah, just thoroughly dry this before you go on to the next step because this background is so soft and nice. It's very, very good to do that sort of, you know, uh, fast, soft forest floor of leaves. All right. Let's take a break from the diffuse background and paint in, in detail our eyes and our nose. So, like I told you, this is going to be one of the best dog eyes you've ever done. We're going to go deep into our dog eyes and our doggy nose. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my quinacridone and my burnt sienna together. Get a little bit of white. Get 
going to paint around the eye on the outside of my eye with this strange color. Just a little bit of an outline on the outside of that eye. If I need to, I'll clean up extra that came down. Now I can make sure that this line isn't too heavy when I go to do first. This is just a damp brush and I'm just wiggling the end of it just to make sure that I just don't have a hard line that I have to, you know, necessarily hide later. This only works if the line is still wet. If not, I have to come back with a little more so I can blend it out. This is the skin that the hair goes into, and I just want to make sure that I have enough room to blend it out. See what I'm doing? Giving myself enough room to blend it out. This will be true, especially this technique uh, I use a lot on American Staffordshire Terriers and American Standard Pit Bulls. Very misunderstood breed of dog. But you see that we're just kind of creating this diffusion around the eyes. That'll let us work the um, all right. I'm gonna come here in some white. added some white into the little background color just for this little bit here yeah I don't have any coffee I mean I wouldn't be sad if coffee came into my world I'm going to grab a little bit of my uh, red and yellow and that's going to make an orange And come in here with a little bit of this orange on the lower half of the eyeball. I am using a number six Raphael sepia. It's just a good point. You could use the Archer for number four round. You could use a Simply Simmons round. I just want to make sure that I have what I need. And then come around and paint the whole eye up here with the orange. I'm leaving a little bit of information left for the um, where the pupil is going to go. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of my brown and black together. I start on the inside corner. And come here and again inside corner. And then around this outside. And then around this outside. So you see I'm getting a very fine line, guys. It's a very, very fine line. Now I'm going to wet my brush. And I'll go ahead and grab some just burnt sienna. And I'm going to come to the top of the eye. Above the pupil. Work down just a little bit of the burnt sienna. Work down just a little bit of the burnt sienna. Now I'm going to come in and grab my uh, eye color that I had here, but I want it to be a little more burnt umber, so I'll go back into the burnt umber and quinacridone mix. And we're going to just come up here because we'll come back with our black. That will do a lot for us. Now while this is having a dry, let's go down and rough in our nose. Okay, and this time we're going to put in a little more um, information. I'm going to use my black and ultramarine blue. It's going to give me kind of like a Payne's gray. I'm 
and come in and kind of paint in all of the nose with this Payne's gray, but not the nostrils. I'll come back with some black for that, but right now I'm just putting in this Payne's gray. And remember, we're not going to soft focus the nose. We're going to just soft focus the body. That's going to be more than enough work for us by the time it's all said and done to get it all the way where we want to get it. And so you definitely, definitely want to make decisions as you're painting about where you put your effort. Curl that up there. <coughs> and I'm going to blend this down here. I'll get some of my glazing medium because I know I'm going to have to kind of pull that in down there, but I want to just make sure. And I'm going to go ahead and glazing medium in some gray here. I know that I will be coming up the nose. So what it is, is it's just such a thin color, but it will be nice when I go to uh, paint the fur on my nose. So this is just the glazing medium in my gray. Wow. That's delightful. And I'm going to take a little gray around my nose here again. And I'm just wiggling it out. This is almost a grisaille in what we're doing. A grisaille is a tonal study. And then I'm going to come back in with just black. Paint my nostrils. Now I know I'm going to be bringing those back to life with more lights and darks. All right. But right now you want just a certain amount of messy underpainting. So let's call this a step because when it all comes together, it comes together so fast. You're going you're to be like, what? Uh, can we have Payne's Gray? Can we use it on the nose? Uh, yeah, Andrea, um, that's a very good question. If you have Payne's Gray, you can absolutely use it on the nose and then reserve black for your deep shadows will get you that same great effect. So Payne's Gray is a good example of a convenience color and we call it convenience color because we technically can mix it but honestly it's nice to buy as a pure pigment. So a lot of times, John can I have a new step? I did. Oh you did the step? Okay. So I'm going to come in and get a little of my black here. Again on my oh, number six. Hmm? Step ahead of you. Nobody could do that. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, I come here and kind of bring in some of our dark black. I'm gonna thicken that line a little bit up here just to show some of the under lid. I underlit again here. And I'll come in a little bit on that inside. So I'm pretty, pretty delicate with it. Now I know I'm going to lose some of these pupils in the reflections, but that doesn't mean I don't need to know exactly where they are. I do. I need to know exactly where they are. So while exactly where they are is having a bit of a dry, and I might even come in and grab a little of my burnt sienna again under here. It's okay if some of the black picks up on it. Nothing like a good shading on the eye. I'm 
looks pretty good. Now we're going to think about our nose. So I'm going to take a little of my white and gray together, still using my round brush. And I may switch to a D because I think it's going to give me a scruffy little blendy better. But let's just start here. And again, we'll want the nose to be just a little more in focus. And maybe it is in the picture. So I'm going to switch to a teeny tiny uh, number zero Raphael D brush. You can use any, now this is one, it's not like an Ovamop where I'm like, you've got to have a D brush. I like the D brushes. They do a good job. Um, but any like small detailed hog bristle brush that you have control over will do this job. You just want a brush that you feel comfortable with that gives you good control. I'm just going to bring this here and I'm going to start just shading. And this may not even be small enough for me. This is wild. I may have to even be smaller. All right, let's come here and grab a little bit of our white and our blue. I'm going to want to definitely, definitely, definitely softly blend in the top of his nose with a gray highlight. highlight. That's what we're doing is we're creating that shading. Then I'm going to Come here and add a little bit of some highlights under those nostrils. Okay, let's grab a little black. Now your dog snifters. Right, your dog who has the snifters is important. To know that there's a bit of personality in a dog snifter. They have different little shape uh, nostrils. It's super cute. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of my Payne's gray and my white making a lighter color. I'm going to add a little bit of a highlight to that inside of that nostril. I'm going to add a little bit right here and add a little bit right here. Dry brush a little coming down. This part of the nose should be fairly dark. Okay, let's look at this overhead, see how we're feeling about our snifter. Snifter's looking pretty good. It's pretty sniffy. I think it's pretty fantastic. It's pretty sniffy. Sometimes we just got to be like, how sniffy is the snifter? Pretty sniffy. They want a super duper close up of you using the D brush next time. So let me know when you're going to use that and I'll get a super duper close up of it. Okay. Even closer than the closest of close ups that we could we do. I want to go too close because then you can't see the hands. Yeah, I'm when, just when making some when shading. 
on the right side here. But when it's time, we will do it. Okay. I don't have one no, no, planned no, no, up no, in the, in the current section, but you know. I'm just saying. I'm answering the question. Well, you got to answer the I question, I see you, Bree. <laughs> you see Bree? He's like, I see you, Bree. <laughs> Again, it's a good brush. I do recommend it. It's not the only brush in the universe that works. I like to reserve room where just black is black. It really helps me kind of keep things together. Then I'm going to take just a little more of my white and gray. I'm going to tap a little reflections. We're going to call this a step because I think that's a, a good step. Let's see how we are. Oh, the nose is looking really good. Got a nice little extreme version of the nose looking here, but it's in focus like the eyes, like the leaf is, and that's like the big thing for me. All right, did we step already? Yeah, here you go. Okay. I'm going to take a lot more of my yellow, my red. Come in here and really exaggerate that, that color. I grab a little of my brown into that orange. I'm going to blend it down into there. And then I would kind of spot out a little bit of irregularity in the main part of the eye. And take a little bit of my purple and brown together. A little bit of a shadow up there. Was the purple and brown. I'm going to go ahead and get a little lighter color of my skin color, which again was the burnt sienna and the quinacridone, if you guys remember. Burnt sienna and quinacridone. Make sure I have a brighter highlight right there. Just kind of worked in. Make sure that I have a nice little kind of outer lid color, blushing it out. And again, it's nice. Right now he looks almost like a pit bull because he's so white and he's got that pink on the eyes, but it'll be interesting when we get the rest of the fur shape in, then he'll go from pity to, um, very border collie and I think that's important to realize when we're painting when we notice that the animals are that similar and just a few changes like changes the breed that maybe some of our reactions to the breed may be a little overblown. I'm just adding a little more uh, black to this. Okay. Now to do the big finish, I have to uh, dry the eye. So yeah, you have to sometimes dry there thoroughly. And uh, if you're having trouble getting questions uh, in in the live chat, um, sometimes there's uh, YouTube will pick up on different sentences and combinations of things and not want to pass it through. So. Uh, you can always email support at theartsherpa.com and we'll help you there too.
So do you want another step here? Another step. We're going right. to just do the reflection in its own step. I'm going to take a little bit of my white and my ultramarine blue together. I've got it on my round brush. Piece together a little bit of a eye reflection. This is sort of a blue sky through trees, which is why I'm using a little ultramarine blue. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I will um, add some white hot spots. See, and by doing that, we're getting that sort of super realistic look. All right, so I'm going to take some just white. So there's hot spots. You see the little hot spots in his eyes? That's looking quite good. Now another thing I might go ahead and exaggerate is I might come in here and exaggerate the orange in his eye. I'm going to take some bright, bright yellow orange. I'm going to tap up and down. Right here and I might even grab some white into this yellow orange. Kind of tapping that up and down inside those eyes a little bit as well. Go back into my orange orange. Tap in just a little bit of that beautiful rust color. The eyes have it. Yeah, deep eye glass. All right, let's go up overhead. See how our eyes are looking? Ah, huh, those are looking pretty good. They are. The lookers are good. The lookers are good. Personally, I will exaggerate these days the light in an eye over the size of an eye. Um, and that's just so that that luminance becomes the focus of everything um, in the overall painting. All right. Now we've got to paint in some dogs. We excited to paint some dog. We're doing so good. I'm going to sip some coffee. I'll tell you that right now. It's good. I could it's use a heat up on my coffee. Is it? All right. I'll give you a heat up and then a new step too. Uh, I want to hear something funny. Yesterday while doing my third painting, I kept saying to myself, why are all your colors faded looking? That's a great observation. Looking at your color and going, why are my colors faded? And these colors are so vibrant when clearly I'm living in contrasting colors right yellow and purple are contrasting colors everything should gray out but by using um clean water practices like I always have some clean water in my bucket i have a bucket divided into three things so i'm always getting clean water palette management rinsing my brushes out and then just good color theory about knowing what's going to feel like it pops and what's going to be desaturated and look back so that these eyes pop even against this background as being even more autumny than the original pupper Oh my goodness, I just love these eyes. These just really work for me. Um, Jackie says, it never fails to amaze me just how good you are. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate that. I very much, I know I'm throwing some harder classes at you guys. Um, I've got some good one hoots coming up for the 13 days of Halloween, but we're all up into some hardcore three hoot fantasy things. We're, we're doing the full scope of of upcoming stuff and I really wanted to make sure that we really did him because I find that when we do dogs 
Um, you guys always have somebody in your life that looks just like the dog we're painting or you need a little bit of help with fur or something. So I find when I go deep into dogs, it always pays off like super duper duper much. All right. Shall we paint further, sir? Yes, I've given you a step. All right, you've given me a step. I think I'm going to start in on some, I think D brushes will be okay. I'm going to grab this. This is a number eight D brush. It's just a basic D brush. I'm going to start painting in some underpaintings of fur and things. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna, not burnt sienna, Mars black, ultramarine blue, gray. And I'll get a little of my white onto here. Maybe a little more white than this, just a very light color. And I'm going to start putting the darker gray value of the muzzle. Coming around. So this is a D brush, number eight de brush, Raphael Artony. So it's hog bristle. The hog bristle brush that gives me very scratchy application. It doesn't give me a a sharp edge per se, um, but I'll have my thick applications of paint to do that. I'll dry brush kind of closer to the nose. We'll do the blending out later. Just want to make sure that I get this there. And this is kind of also down here. Kind of a little bit of a muzzle starting. I may have to put some of that line back and that's okay. I can do that. Because I can come right back with my blue gray and my glasses so I can see well. That's the other trick. I'll tell you that right now. I just want to make sure I don't lose all of my dark here. And the trick about this, this changes a lot about your pup, puppy. So we want to make sure we get this line right. I'm taking a little bit of my white over to my gray. I'm going to just make sure this is all painted in very nicely. Just a nice little gray. And I will come back and shade all that. That'll be lovely. Let's continue on with our D. Some of this is just, you've just got to put in that rough beginning, you know? You've just got to get that in there and then I'm going to take a little of my black over to my blue. And make sure that I've got a little bit of this coming out here. And then, of course, that wonderful shape to the ear. This hair we're going to see actually by highlighting it. It'll be an interesting way that we do that. Now I'm not going to get in too far into this. I'll very lightly dust it around. I'll be doing that detail in a minute. And again, we'll see this hair through highlights, not just color hue. And this does start to change the breed of our dog. So if you were a little worried not to worry, or if you were like, oh my goodness, is that how I would do my pity? Yes, 
you would just be painting the pity's coat and rounding out the head a bit. I'm doing soft little circles here just to make sure that I've got a nice soft transition. There we go. Bringing it on up here. I'll talk a little bit about the fluff coming off the ear that way. And obviously some of his little face needs to come down over here. And we will exaggerate some fur coming off as well. But you can see I'm just being very general around here for a lot of it, where I'm just making sure the canvas has the beginnings of some paint on it. And then through everything, what we're going to do is we will, as we paint, we'll... Remember, some of that hair coming off the sides in the ears, right? So... Like I'm going to take my round brush, my number six sepia round, and I'm going to load it up with black paint. And make sure that the main shape of that primary ear here is crisp so that when I go to, you know, maybe flick a few little hairs off here. We really feel that main shape. And let's do the same over here, right? Where we're going to make sure that that ear has a good strong shape. So we've got some black on here. Now I know I've got to make this leaf bigger. That's another thing that will be changing. Okay. That's not a bad beginning of an underpainting. Let's dry all this in. Let's dry, 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 dry it. Dry, 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 dry. All the way dry. I like how the puppy starts to come into... Uh, come into focus with the layers. It's one of the my favorite parts about watching these paintings come together. So we appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us and being part of our online YouTubery family. It's beautiful to see all of you people out there with us. Thank you. And don't be afraid to paint. That's one of the big things we've been trying to say all along is that you can do this. We break these paintings down. We, Cinnamon does, I point the cameras at it. So I like to say we, but she teaches you guys the step-by-step -step methods that really are accomplishable. So don't be afraid to jump in and try. Yeah, it's, it's a big project in time and in layers and in techniques for sure. But none of these time layer techniques are beyond what you, a beginner, could do. You, a beginner, absolutely should be able to do these these things. And, 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 and maybe it's not all going to be like smooth flowing the first time that's okay like it might be like i gotta really work for this all right this is a number 12 select round blender this one isn't a synthetic hair but for this brush that doesn't seem to really matter i'm going to get it slightly wet and i'm going to come here first and grab a little bit of my white and my glazing medium in ultramarine blue and i'm going to make sure this little bit of light white fur here, while out of focus and softly focus, just a slightly lighter highlight right there. It just needs to be slightly better. Okay. I'll rinse that out. I'm going to make sure that right here, I'm going to also flick out a little bit of black. This is just making sure that as I'm playing with values, that I have the give I want. I'm not making hairs that pull my focus. These are still very, very 
diffused, right? This is not in focus. This is still diffused. And we're making sure that everything has its good value. So when I go to pop it, it pops. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my black. Make sure that I've got a nice depth. Notice that I'm using the round blender and I'm bringing the color down. I'm making sure I've got a nice bit of coverage. Do something similar kind of over here. Adding a little bit of hairs that are coming up. But they're not overwhelming, guys. I'm going to make sure that the hair at the ear is quite de deep so we can do highlights. Just making sure we've gotten a nice color. So we're painting the furthest fur back and then coming forward. And sometimes in when you're doing something that's more realistic, that is the way to go. I'm taking a little bit of my... You, you said the furthest fur. The furthest fur. All right. So I'm taking my black and a little bit of white and glazing medium. Now I'm going to start creating these little highlights. See how this is just black and white? It's a very light highlight. I'm just softly blending that over. This is that first soft. I haven't even gotten any zinc involved. I'm just making a light highlight. We will come back with our darks and it will just sing. Now let's get a little of our glazing medium and a little more white. Very lightly kiss. Soft, soft, soft reflection here. Get some glazing medium if you need it. Just barely touching. So see, this isn't even a grainer. Um, the other day, some people were concerned about, like, did I have to have a grainer to do this work? And I got to tell you, you don't got to have a grainer to do this work. I'm going to add a little highlights right here. These are just small highlights. And then bringing them down this way. Now I'm going to rinse out. That's a lot of gray on that dog. So I'm going to come back in with my black. Maybe even a little blue, but mostly my black. Gonna make a little bit of a deep black right there. 
and I'm going to blend back a little black fur. I'm coming back with this same brush. All right, just coming back with the same brush. Huh? I will check it. I don't know. Well, there we go. There's fur coming off here. And then just brush it back down and make sure I've got all the canvas covered. Brush, brush, brush. Just the patience of it is important. Okay, now let's call that a step. See how we got half a face? <laughs> this is what we're doing. He's a very happy face. Is a very happy face. So now I'm going to take a little of my... I can come here and kind of tap this in, but I don't want to take away the brown. I'm just blending these areas in. I'm going to take some glazing medium. And glaze around those eyes. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my I can wind them out a little lid there. Add a little one here. I'm going to go into my skin mix, but I haven't rinsed my brush. And I'm bringing a little highlight. And a little bit of a highlight there. I'm going to grab a little bit of my gray and my glazing medium and my round brush. Just bring out a little bit of a highlight. A little bit of a high, just lightly, 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 lightly. Oh my god, so lightly. And then we gotta unage our little puppers here. I'm gonna rinse out my brush and get my just black. Kind of knock that highlight back. And brush that down. Look at that. Let's look at that. John! John! Yeah. It's buffering! 
It's I don't know how long it's even been buffering for. Okay. Okay. I hope it stops. Sorry. Just didn't know where you were. Okay. Just running a little bit of glaze and a bit of black and we're deepening some of those shadows and see then that becomes hair reflections but the dog stays black. Does that make sense? Now let's call it another step and we're going to do all this hard work on the other side. Jim and Jim's going to grab a little black. Just make sure that that's just a little darker than it was. Sorry, I had to pull you away from what no, you were doing. You're good. I was just right, right in the room. I couldn't hear you because the door was closed. All right. So we've knocked that back, and that makes that eye feel just a little more realistic for us, right? Again, you could use your grainer right now, but my point is, is that sometimes you do need a brush for something like you need a brush for fur and bushes and blending. And if you can only get one, maybe you can only get the 12, you know, the number 12 round blender. I'm just brushing this around his little face a little more carefully. What's what? There it goes. Oh, there goes my mic. Um, so this is you're, you're working on an 11. Oh, it's buffering again. Oh, there it goes. Okay. It's so, an 11 by 14. It's, it's an 11 by 14. And uh, you used the traceable printed on an 8.5 by 11 and then just... Yeah. Yeah. You can tool up is how I did it. I, I enlarged the traceable. Um, you can use a tiling service. I have just loaded a light gray, right, which is my uh, Mars black, ultramarine blue, a little glazing medium, and my titanium white here. And I'm just very lightly painting in this highlight. So, yeah, what was I have it set um, for an 11 by 14, but your printer probably is an 11 by 14 printer. So then it's about figuring out if you want to use the tiling feature, which is one that you can use, or if you want to. Um, oh, that's just really nice. Um, use a enlargement feature like I just enlarged mine up over a hundred percent and so that cut off some of so some of some of it is knowing your printer you got to know your printer because I can't really necessarily answer for everybody's printer because everybody's printer is a little different hey guys I am watching the uh the stream here and, and it uh it seems to occasionally be buffs I mean it does seem to be that the problem is intermittent and working. So uh, I would say that uh, if you just hang with us, it, it, it will likely continue to work out and the buffering will fix itself. I'm hoping so. I would like that. It generally will correct yeah, it, it like in the processing. Yeah, it, it, it generally rebuilds because it, it, it finishes streaming whatever was buffered and missed. So it, it does a pretty good job of keeping it all together um, a little bit. You can just hit pause for a second and, and give I'm about I'm going 30, back into black. And it gives yourself about 30 seconds of buffering. And then you can hit play again and it'll, chances are that will give it enough, uh, you know, buffering space that you won't even necessarily notice what's going on. So, yeah, because I'm watching it kind of jump back and forth here. And it, they're just, I'm just gonna also giving them play by play of buffering. how it's working. Yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. I was getting a little, little stressed. No, it's uh, but it, it it does. It seems to buffer and then pop back on. That looks really, really good. Now another thing that we can do is use this to try to very carefully catch the edges of my more of a controlled brush. This is a Filbert Grainer. Right here, Filbert Grainer. And that lets me just capture the, like if the edges of the ears are a little bit glowing, which they often will be because the fur be shiny there. 
So if the round brush doesn't want to give me a good little edge, I can come in with a filbert grainer and have a little more control. This is a 3 8 filbert grainer. It is one of my favorite brushes. You can make your own. I've got to make that video where I make a filbert grainer for you guys. You know? I have the brushes ordered to do the conversion, and I think they were like, I don't know, under $6. Right, they're just a they're just a simply Simmons filbert. I'm gonna trim up, get a little more of my white on here, a little glazing medium. A little bit of a highlight there. Just lightly brush a little highlight out here. A little more glazing medium. The glazing medium keeps it from being such a strong color and allows some of the um, painting to show through from underneath. It gives me an alternative to, to zinc, though I do think zinc is a good option. Anywhere I think I was too much with it, I come back with the black. Boy, he is just coming in beautifully, isn't he? When yeah, do you have no, to go he's... get kids? Because I'm uh, ready to like... But uh, in a bit. Okay. In the power of Grayskull here if I have to. So I can always knock back anything if I think I overdid. See how I was able to knock back that, I do. that whole thing. But I actually believe that the fur over here is like a little more... Right, I, I'm using the glazing medium and I'm going to just... There we go. And see, that gives us that light transition that still reads as black fur to our brain. Right? And that's the thing that we're trying to do is just make sure that we're reading it as black, not gray. I can go into my glazing medium and my black. Make sure that I have nice little doggy brows. Just good doggy brows. Now what I am going to do is come in and kind of work out this eye on this side. My goodness, he is as involved as I thought he would be, but also at the same time. Not as involved as a heat, you know? It's a weird deal. Yeah. I'm going to grab a little bit of my gray. I'm mixing my kind of brown skin tone into it. And just a little bit there as well. I feel like I've got to smooth that out. I can totally do that. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Pretty a, good indeed. Then I can always just make sure that there's that dark, dark, dark. Black, black, black. Under that lid. My goodness. Look at this. I'm going to have a sip here. 
Did you even sip. know? Good place to sip. Nope, I'm out. You're oh. out? That's you're, okay. You're out of steps? I'm out, no, I'm, I'm out of coffee. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. All right, so we're going to do some nose, my friend. Because the nose knows, I'm going to get my uh, nice white. And I'll go ahead and tone it with just a little bit of ultramarine blue. So it's an off-white. And I've got a glazy medium. And I'm still on my number 12. Yeah, this is just super fun to do. This is an indicator, with the exception we're going to get into zinc, on how we're going to get that fox done. Look at that go. That's super nice, isn't it? I love how it gets me that uneven kind of fur effect. Again, number 12, Princeton Round Blender. Have it for sale in my store. It's also available. Every, it's Princeton Brush. I have not snuck, snuck these. I cannot tell you how many people are like, this brush exists nowhere. And I'm like, well, they do exist in art stores. So I would start there. <laughs> it's like. I would go and look at the art store, but people will just assume that I'm recommending a brush that's only available in my store. And I, at the moment, am not making my own line of brushes, so I don't have an exclusive to my store um, brush line. If that makes sense. Coming around the eyes, gonna just make sure we have a little bit of those little white hairs around those eyes. So that's another thing, which is that the markings are distinctive enough. I notice that I can, even though this is a very fluffy brush, I can come quite close to my nose. But it might go over, so I do have to be careful. Glazing medium, my white, and a little bit of my blue-gray. Look at my little flick them off there. Isn't that just perfect? And by having white still be a color that I'm coming up on, it really will help me. Having another level of white highlight. I'm going to come down here. And then I'm going to come here into kind of an off white and a glazing medium. That was from earlier from my skin color, but I'm actually going to use it interestingly down here, making sure that I've got a nice diffusion. Because we do want this to have the look of being foreshortened and maybe out of focus. Does that make sense? I'm making some gray there and just making sure that that is, again, soft, diffused, and out of focus. And then I'm going to rinse. And with a little glaze of my just black. Bring that up there. That's looking pretty darn good, doesn't it? 
Okay, let's come down here and we're going to blend back some hair, some black. See how we're doing that? And that keeps it from being just a lip. And I'm going to get lazy medium and my white. A little bit of blue in it, but it's going to be a light color. And then just a little bit there. See how I just kissed a little bit of that doggy nose and I just really hope to go. Yes, yeah. Can okay, take off this extra paint around here. All right. Let's call that a step. And then we're going to add some little spots and a little more detailing to the nose. But this is doing fairly well. And then we're on to the leaf. Man, we are doing this painting today. There's the next step. The next step. I'm going to grab a little bit of my glazy medium and some gray. And come around here and start to shade back. Just a little bit. You know how there's a bit of that at the nose. And then a little bit right here coming around and again a little bit right here. And then lightly add some beauty marks. Cutie marks. Little spots at the muzzle, right? Now I'm going to get some glazing medium and some white. Brush back into this gray. See how we're doing? And that softens that, doesn't it? Include a little bit to that outside edge, just a little bit of fur highlighting. What do you think, babe? You loving it? It is, but now I have, I have Mrs. Conehead in my head saying, maintain low text tones with me. Did we get yelled at? No, but oh. Amy was saying that she was setting her text tones in chat. Oh. And so now I have skits from in your mind? the late 80s, Saturday Night Live of, cone heads coming in and saying maintain low text tones you know <laughs> that's what we would do i swear so i'm just making sure that we have a little shading Look at our fluffy pupper's face. Let's look at this overhead. Are we happy? I'm pretty happy. I think it's working. Pretty darn happy. Uh, my husband gets his own text tone, which is one million saying boing, 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 boing. Or boing, boing, boing. Yeah, I like it. All right, we're going to dry everything just mostly so we don't drag our hands across the whole painting, ruining it. Don't want to do that. Must dry the surface thoroughly between these steps so that those eyes can look up at you with all of that. And, and your, your eyes are drawn to the eyes. That is a, it's a thing they do in uh, psychology where you're like, you know, you got to see the eyes and the eyes draw you in. But everything being out of focus, you know, it's a pretty neat thing. So... Do, 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 do. There it is. What is where? Oh, Our okay. next step. I'm going to take, I think I'm going to take an angle brush. I'm going to take a Princeton Select half inch angle brush. And I'm interestingly enough going to take a mixture of white and yellow ochre. And 
I'm going to bring down this little leaf with white and yellow ochre. It's okay that some of the edge will show through here. We don't mind. What we want is something that will let us make our yellow leaf work. This will just make sure that our outer edges and our inner edges all are nice together. That's the thing too, is if you remember, we made a point of blending in so that our leaf would have nice crisp edges over a diffused and out of focus background. Leaf is going to actually probably go in much quicker than we think. That's because leaves be like that. They really do. I'm just making sure that I've got nice colors underneath. Doesn't matter, I'm just using whole ochre. I don't care. It's more about making there not an edge. Does that make sense? To the dark. To the dark side, sir. Don't go to the dark side unless they bring cookies. And then by all means, change, change, change to the dark side. <laughs> Look at that. We underpainted that leaf so quickly. That was so quick. And we'll add a little fur over the top so things are distinctly in the layer that they're in. But I want to dry this yellow ochre layer before I do any more stuff. There we go. So it won't take very long to just dry this. This, this leaf is going to come together real fast. So... Don't leaf yet. You'll miss it. For realsies. Yeah. Gonna dry it all and then it will go on to the next step. And it looks like the intertubes have smoothed out. What'd you, what'd you forget? The twig. Oh, the twig? Do we gonna put, keep the twig on the same step? Yeah, we'll keep the twig on the same step. Twig. It's the leaf that's coming out. There we go. It's back though. So right. you need to dry that part too? Nah. Okay, it'll be dry by the time I get over to it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm gonna be to like next step? Yeah, well next step and I can debrush, I can um so many choices, I have to tell you, but I'm gonna right now kind of create my little yellow. So I'm gonna just grab a little yellow and red. And I mute it back, believe it or not, with a little bit of deoxazine purple. Deoxazine purple is a superpower in fall painting. So, and again, it, it's time to invest in some zinc because that's what's going to get the ghosties and the really 
you know, blended three hoots coming up over the holidays. I added a little more red to it. Now we're just getting some color involved. So this is cad yellow, a little cad red, and some dioxazine purple. You can see that gets us really close to the yellow. Now I'm going to take a little more yellow and I'm going to come up the vines and blend in just a little more bright yellow. I might grab a smidge of my phthalo green and uh, I mean phthalo blue and a little bit of my burnt sienna and some of my cad yellow and blend in some of this sort of like little green edging So that was just mixing that in and creating a green gold. It's important that fall leaves feel dimensional because they actually have quite a lot of personality. I mean, quite a lot. Mixing a little bit of the yellow ochre into my yellow orange mix. Come up my little stem. Add a little more docks purple into it. Add a little shading here. And even at the end of it. Now. I'm going to add just a little bit of kind of pointed dimensionality to these leaves. So I'm doing, taking that yellow green. Adding up a little more of the yellow green. I'm using my number six round. And I'm just choosing to add details with this brush to the edge of the leaf. See how that gives us like a little crispy edge. And we just want a little crispy edge. Add a little green to the stem. I like to pull, like if there's a color that I know I've got in spades, a bunch of different places, then I like to put it, uh, like, like I want to make sure if I've got a lot of it here, I stick just a little on the stem. It will help it look real and organic. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's important to make sure you dry between these steps because it, it comes together really quickly, but the, the layering here is important to make the effects really kind of show through. Uh, then you have to build up those color layers. So that'll, that'll be coming in next. Make sure you thoroughly dry. Don't forget to check out the links in the descriptions below where you can find a list of all the materials that we used here. Um, if you like, you can check out our website where we have like resources and things for you. Rebecca Clowers is bringing us some information that we need. Okay. Uh, so Rebecca was, a, a link popped up on the phone, probably from Facebook, I imagine.
oh. um, to a different website. Um, there are people who pretend to be me, and they, uh, they'll even make a, a page that kind of looks like my page. Here's what they can't get. They can't get 310,000 subscribers and years of content and all of that that I have. So one of the first things is if you look at the place sharing the link, if it just looks like that channel just happened, if I haven't made 20 videos about my channel being taken down, I have to rebuild. That isn't what's going on. It is a scammer, somebody trying to look like that. They, uh, I don't ask for your credit cards for streams. Um, and you, one of that's another warning that you'll get is that it'll, it'll want your credit card information and everything. My streams will be from YouTube. Um, I might simultaneously cast, we just figured out how to simultaneously cast maybe to Facebook, um, or Twitch or something, but it will be the Art Sherpa officially streaming and it isn't going to require your credit card. And the only protections we have on Facebook actually are because of us, our community made huge changes in Facebook policy on scammers. It's not good enough yet, but let me tell you, it is better than it was. Yeah. Yeah, they, I now can block all of the accounts that, that a scammer creates, but they have a bot, so for as good, you know, for as much as that helps. All right, this is all dry. Right, We're going to continue on creating some details. Let's add a little step. I'm going to grab a little bit of my burnt sienna, my red, my cad red, and interestingly enough, my black. So it's a very rusted burnt kind of color. Just a little more than my Sienna is. And I am going to make little kind of spotted little lines coming down. So this is an implied line of the, the center leaf. And I'm kind of tapping up and down and that's because I'm trying to mimic the irregularness of it. It is much thinner as it comes out the leaf and it gets stronger as it comes back. I'm just tapping this up and down. A lot of what we do as artists is look at ways to mimic the natural world. Right? What, how can I do all the detail without doing every detail kind of a thing? Right? And that is, you know, for most of us, pretty, pretty darn tricky. Very light line. Very light line. These are very light lines that are on the leaf. So we want to just get them barely there. And just kind of sketch them on. It's just a very light effect. Alrighty, now I'm going to want to rinse out. Do you want to change uh, steps, babe? Okay, let's put I some personality on this steps. leaf. I'm going to do the number zero art. Any, any hog brush that you have, any hog brush that you have, right? That's hog bristle. This is a D zero art knee brush, but any hog bristle that you have control over. I'm going to tap up and down. And kind of load a stipple. See how I'm doing? So you probably have more than just this brush that does a stipple in your in your brush bucket. But 
but we're creating the roughness, the discoloration and stuff that is happening maybe in this leaf. All right, where it's gone brown. Let's grab a little bit of my yellow and some phthalo blue and you get kind of this weirdy green. I'm going to just add a little scruffling of that. A couple of places and see how that's very rough. Scruffling. Scruffling. Get in there. Make a little more orange. Kind of lightening this back and breaking it up with a little bit of orange. It's still dark. There's a little bit more orange here. Okay, call that a step. Now I'm going to take a lot of my yellow, maybe a little of my white. And I'm going to have some of this rough scruffling brightness. There's a bit of a glaze on this, so it will knock back some of the color. See how it's doing? See, that pushes that back. And by using this brush, I'm able to diffuse and make it not shiny. It's rough. It's old. It's patinaed. So you guys know it did buffer there for a minute, but it cached up that buffer and re-uploaded it. So I believe that if you missed anything, you can just rewind and it will be there. I'm going to use a, <coughs> a little grainer to create some rough little pox and lines on the leaves. See how we're doing? These would be like little burns or... And you're almost there. Yeah, we're really almost done. You just want to make sure that your leaf feels like it's old. And then when it's all done, I get a little glazing medium and my grainer. Kind of not a perfectly white white, but pretty white. And that little part of the bit would go over the stem. So now his face is holding, right? That's a big thing. And then I'm going to take a little bit of my purple and my brown. And add some roughness in that stem coming off there.
And then I might come in and take a little of my purple and yellow and glazing medium. See what I'm doing? Kind of imply a bit of a shadow. See, it's very light. If I take away any of my um, white fur by adding that shadow, right? That's just something that experience tells me is maybe been lost in the reference. Some of the light effect just to get the color that's there. And sometimes when things are, I'm using a grainer here, if you're wondering. Going to add a little bit of white fur just to the top of the nose with the grainer. Just making sure. Also, this, this lets that edge and this edge all tie together. Sometimes it's just about, you know, making sure that you can... Wow, aren't we there? That really turned out great. I feel and bad is, for anyone it's, that it's, didn't it's make right, it today. It, and this is right in time because I'm going to have to go get the kids now. Are you? It's a kid getting time. Oh, okay. Well, I could have kept going, but you know. Well, you, I could leave you here? No, no, no. I mean like <laughs> like I'm not tired. I know. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and some white. I'm really excited about this one. I feel like these classes are leveled. You're getting to see the tools. You're getting to hear why you would want a tool and when you wouldn't want a tool. Yeah. Right? You're getting like crazy force perspective, out of focus, in focus, all of that fun stuff. Like, so now that cute picture your pupper in a weird potty position isn't so overwhelming to try and paint. Now it's going to be just like super fun for you. And I love it. I love this. I love getting to do this with you. I hope you enjoy this cutie patootie. Mm -hmm. um, we've got an easy teapot. It's a one hoot teapot coming up. Very chill. And then it is 13 days of Halloween. If you are not signed up for the newsletter over on the website, theartsherpa.com, you're going to want to go over and sign up for that because yeah. that's going to have your materials. I, I will make some suggestions that you're going to get um, a couple of brushes and zinc and glazing medium for the three hoot ones because that's how we're going to get those oil effects in our acrylics. We're going to continue to be softer. We're going to continue to push that really hard you guys are gonna love that but of course there's one hoots as well and you don't want to miss that um we're ten dollars shipping out of our art store if you're having trouble finding any of these materials we have them in the art store um and you can get them from us though i do try to work with stuff that are big international brands that you can get other places too so i just think we have a great price and a great selection and we're often in stock and so that makes us a good resource um I am not doing the whiskers because the honest truth is them being on one side and not on the other side um, is... It, is, it confuses people. Yeah. And it's it, hard it's sometimes. It's going to have to do them over there. So there I'm going to say nay to whiskers. Yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I will I will be like, you know, I'm not going to do whiskers. It's interesting. And I've watched this over a lot over the years. Sometimes adding a detail can Takes make... Takes away yeah. a whole bunch. So, so you can put them in, but I think what on this particular case, what we're going to get is these very specific lines. Mm. And right now I'm more concerned about catching his little face. So we can have some whisker practice, but that's where your Holga painting... Sometimes I don't do it with you guys because I'm like, and that's where your Holga painting comes in and or if you don't have the right Posca pen or, you know, those kinds of things that can throw you off. So those are we will add more whiskers to stuff, but we'll specifically come in on like when to whisker, when not to whisker kind of a thing. Um, Pam's loving the tutorial and I hope you guys are loving this. I didn't even use the zinc white. Normally, you know, you would get into some bone black and some zinc white to get some of the subtleties on a black dog. But I think even with our limited palette, 
we really managed to do this oh, yeah. quite well and when you add zinc and you add the tools to it like it just levels up again so we're going to do some leveling up on our paintings and what we get to paint and do to paint so more three hoots will be coming but i will never stop having one hoots and beginner classes for people who have just just started painting yesterday and like to know how to load the brush i have a free school for that if that is you if you're like you saw all this and you're like i can't do any of this Go to my free school. It's the first 10 paintings you should ever do and all the techniques you need to know. So you can paint one hoot, two hoot, and three hoot classes a lot easier because it won't be like, what's a dry brush? How are we doing this blending? Why are we? A lot of that gets put into that course. That's free. Definitely go by and check out our store. Um, again, we've got $10, $10 shipping. What? You're looking at me. Damn you got to go. All right. So John's got to go. So I want you to be good to yourselves and be good to each other. And I'll see you really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.